Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi, Arka. Welcome to the Tricks of the Trade. Yes, hello. Yeah, thank you yeah. for taking the time to join us for this session, right? We really appreciate and are thrilled to have you on our podcast. Let me tell you a bit about our series and about Curate itself, right? So okay. vision behind Tricks of the Trade is getting industry experts like you with years of experience and knowledge to come on board and share practical tips and tricks, the industry know-how, the pitfalls, etc. right? So this okay. in turn subsequently enables upskilling for our viewers who can be employees or college students or anybody, anybody you know, wanting to broaden their business knowledge and get an insider scoop of the trade. So hmm. uh, and Curate's vision, you know, aligns with constantly upskilling to become the best version of yourself. And Curate is basically an IIM alumni venture and India's first revenue tech firm, right? And we are enabling leaders, startups, and corporations to maximize their revenue potential by building the best revenue teams. So I have a couple of questions as well. If you can just brief us about your education and about yourself as well. Uh, so actually, uh, I completed my MBA in the year of 2017. Okay, and uh, yes, uh, I'm from Adams University actually, and then I got uh, you know placement in couple of companies like uh, Byju's, Extra Mark, Ceasefire, and all. So uh, actually, I decided to join Byju's because uh, from the beginning only, or from school days only. I was very fascinated towards talking to people, meeting new people and, you know, convincing them or uh, many of my friends used to come to me and, you know, for solutions and help. So from there only I decided, OK, so sales is something which I think that this is my cup of tea. And if I can actually, you know, enter into sales uh, background or sales career, it will be uh, good for me also. So that's it. Right. So uh, what hmm. inspired you to pursue, pursue, you know, a career in sales? What I told you, ki, uh, from the, you know, school days only, uh, I don't know why, but I uh, actually feel happy talking to new people or giving them solutions or, you know, actually convincing them. And uh, from my uh, school days only, I started one network marketing. Okay, at that time it was very famous. So I just joined there so that I can get some discounts. But after that, you know, I took it up as a challenge. I, I joined as a consultant in Oriflame and then actually I was a senior manager in Oriflame. So then uh, it was a purely, you know, commission based job. But then I realized, ki, okay, I love convincing people and I love interacting to people. So I think that sales will be a great career for me. So right. that is why I actually decided to join MBA. And after that, I'm pursuing my career in sales. Yeah, that's it. Right. So what does the day in your you know role looks like? Yeah. So currently, I'm working here as a senior or uh, you can actually I'm heading the entire state of West Bengal now. So actually, we are expanding rapidly. OK, and um, currently, you know, my day look like first I need to take meets with the BDMs. OK, uh, then with the CBS or BDS uh, actually. OK, to understand. OK, so the leadership which I believe is coaching. OK, and uh, here uh, it's uh, not only a revenue you know, driven company, it's a culture driven company. We are more focusing okay. on culture so that employees are also very happy. OK, so that is one thing. And now uh, I'm involved into setting up of, uh, of processes. Right. And, uh, you know, setting up of quality and then, you know, auditing and uh, then <laughs> evaluating the performance data and all. So that is, uh, oh, you know, a day look like for me. Yeah. Right. So uh, how can a pre-sales you know, team effectively communicate the value proposition of, say, a complex product or service to, you know, your mm -hmm. potential customers? So basically, I don't feel that uh, there should be any difference between pre-sales and sales because right. before joining Next Drive or before joining this company, okay, uh, I used to work in hardcore sales only. But here, it's there is no difference in pre-sales and sales. So it is a part of sales process where pre-sales team is actually helping the sales team to close. Okay, so what the pre-sales team is generating basically, we are trying to create that awareness in the market. Okay. Because most of the students who are actually in their graduation days, maybe in first year or just completed their class 12, they are very confused what to do, how to do, what to learn, how to learn, and what will be the, you know, 
how i'll get a high paid job so that you know i will get social respect and all those things okay so the may the most difficult thing or like 95% of the students are dreaming that they want to get a high paid job by the end of their graduation but the problem is that they are not having right guidance and what we feel is there is a gap between current industry requirement and academics okay so you know if the major companies are working with artificial intelligence machine learning and all so in our college days uh, they are learning c++ java and all right so they actually need to understand ki what are the skills they must acquire or they must develop so the pre sales team is actually you know they can help them to understand or to create that impact or to actually make them interested or make them learn ki what is the requirement that's how the sales team uh, pre sales team is working actually yes right. and and hmm. what are some common challenges you know that pre sales professionals face when working with sales teams and how can these challenges be overcome so uh, in this question first i'll i'd like to know that as i told you that here we actually we are valuing culture okay and if there is proper right. integrity among the two teams i don't think that there should be any challenges or any difficulties okay as i told you right. that these are not two separate teams this these are actually mm -hmm. part of the sales process okay so uh, we are actually not facing any such difficulties but yes uh, uh, the thing is ki uh we must do our part our like the pre sales team must you know actually generate leads and the value value proposition must, must be created okay that is that is all what i think and i don't think there is uh, some challenges between sales and pre sales team yeah right all right and and what are some of the most effective channels for you know generating high quality leads and how do you determine mm -hmm. what what channels mm -hmm. to focus on so basically there are a lot of channels okay there are a lot of channels now but yeah it's it all depends on budget okay and it all mm. depends on cost per lead okay so and it all depends on your requirement also for example uh, in a you know in a week or in a month how much or what is the requirement according to that we can decide okay so there are a lot of channels like influencer marketing is there okay which is a, a very prominent channel nowadays okay uh, then affiliate marketing is also there okay and uh, then there is a one you know uh, the cold calling process is also there which is a major process in any you know sales or any tech company but yeah but uh, uh, we are not only you know now there are a lot of channels so it's better to not only depend on a particular channel rather than exploring new channels and you know new avenues so that's it so that is how we decide yeah right and uh, what role does uh, personalization play in lead generation and you know how can organizations effectively personalize their outreach efforts definitely personalization is very very important in terms of lead generation or in terms of you know pre sales or sales because if you are not actually personalizing and generalizing things so if you are generalizing then there is a wastage of time money and effort okay so personalization can happen in many ways okay so for example personalization can happen in for example uh, first i need to determine that which set of audience i need to target okay then i need to determine that uh, which are the channels or how we can actually reach out to them okay so what should be the geographical territory what should be the you know age criteria okay educational background everything so nowadays it is possible uh, with the help of digital marketing it's it's very much possible to personalize things okay so i think personalization plays a key role uh, you know in targeting yeah that's it right right and uh, how can marketers and sales team work together to you know ensure that leads are properly nurtured and converted into customers you know in this whole process the most important part is sales funnel okay so actually we need to properly utilize the funnel okay to actually maximize the outcome okay so what i think is first of all right focus is very important and i feel like 
there is uh, no differentiation between market uh, market year and sales okay so here what we are doing is the pre-sales team is actually you know we are trying we are generating leads as well as uh mm -hmm. you know we are creating that value and then only we are gi giving that leads to sales team okay right. so yes what we must ensure is the as uh, again i'll tell the integrity and you know uh the approach should be outcome over output okay so that is one approach and i think that uh okay so if we are generating a lead we must value a lead okay if the integrity right. is there the sales team will also value pre-sales team will also value and the marketing team will also mm -hmm. value okay but we need to actually set up the process so that the sales funnel is utilized properly otherwise uh mm -hmm. you know there are a lot of wastage of leads and there are uh you know some drop drop uh rates and all okay yeah right and uh, what are the what are some of the most important metrics to track when it comes to measuring team output and and why i like to tell you that um, okay i i i don't believe uh, in the term of output okay so we are always focusing on outcome okay because you know uh, in most of the companies we are only focusing on output for example uh, the metrics are like how many hours they are working okay what is their total call time total number of dials okay uh, you know uh, for example registrations qualification sales uh, for me these are all outputs okay so for example if the sales team is working their actual work is to you know uh, actually guide a student in a proper way okay or you know actually create that value so for me outcome is the most important part and if we are actually focusing on outcome rather than output then uh, obviously uh, the results are different okay because right. you know if i am asking an employee to you know i need 3 hours of call time from you okay so the employee is only thinking that okay doing 3 hours of call time is my job but it's not right. their, their job right so that is the thing and then then if we are focusing on output then only actually maximum deviations happen okay because you know then right. the the employee also should think ki, okay so if this is my job i'll talk uh, you know the long calls and all these things so yeah i what i believe right. is outcome not output outcome over output actually yeah Right, that that's great. And uh, and what are some common mistakes organizations make when tracking team output, right? And and how can we avoid these mm. as well? Some of the mistakes, as I told you, these both the questions mm. are somewhat similar to me only. That yeah, mistakes are there because you know, first of all. what i believe is if we are actually focusing on culture then we first need to understand the employee okay if you are only judging an employee in terms of output then that is not the same okay so for example i'll give you some examples so that it will be easier for audience so you know right the mistake is for example if it's coming late okay yeah. but you will manage so if i do something late, i know the manager don't want that employee to come late, or there is nothing the manager is doing wrong okay but yeah. the manager if he is shouting or you are late okay there only there is a between okay. that the picking keep he came okay. right after that if i'll first try to the first approach to be i he was, i must try to understand that mm -hmm. if this is genuine okay they can actually helping only we actually tell that person this is actually not expected and we can be very straight forward okay? we can be very straight forward uh, that we can do but first we need to understand the employee we need to understand the consequences and what i think is in in most of the organization we must act as a role model for them a role model doesn't means you know sachin tendulkar or mahendra singh dhoni but role model is someone whom they can 
actually relate in that organization okay so for example being a senior manager or being a state head if i am using mobile phone during a meeting so i am actually you know letting them i'm actually sending that message that it's okay to use mobile in the meeting right if i am coming late i'm actually sending them the message it's okay to come late right so what mm -hmm. i believe is whatever we accept, whatever we accept is the culture okay so right. the most important part right. what i believe the mistakes are done because we are not trying to actually understand the employee we are only judging them by metrics okay only metrics will not work that is right. my point of view <laughs> Right. That's a great approach. And uh, how can you ensure that, uh, you know, our tracking processes are transparent and fair to all team members? Because we are using cloud telephony. OK, so all the, you know, associates who are working, so they know right. that every of their calls are actually being recorded. OK, so they know that. And their managers and separate quality, you know, teams are there who will be checking their, you know, actually outcome. Okay. But uh, right. one thing which I believe, you know, they, our uh, employee, I'll not tell them employees, our associates are not, you know, using any wrong term because from the very first day, what we believe is the, you know, one of right. the major thing in our core value is safeguarding brand value. Okay. So safeguarding brand value value is, you know, ultimate priority for each and every one of us. Okay. So from the right from the associate level only, we try to build that mindset. Okay. And they knows that their calls are getting recorded. And they know that only, you know, doing three hours of call time is not their job. They are they are actually those people, they are actually, you know. Some, some like they are having that superpower, you know, to influence others' life, to guide a student. Okay, right. so we have a lot of stories like a Swiggy delivery boy to a software engineer. Okay, so you know right. we they they are also very happy when the students are telling them, okay, thank you so much for the opportunity. That is what they are working. That is what you know they are focusing, and uh, yeah. According to the process, the process is very transparent. They know that if they are doing any mistake or if they are actually, you know, doing any fake commitments and all. So, as I told you, that safeguarding brand value is uh, is our main focus. So, uh, they know yeah. that uh, there is zero deviation or zero tolerance in that. Yeah. That is how we ensure. Right. 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 That was very mm -hmm. insightful. And... Uh, this is the last question I'm going to ask. Uh, how can you, you know, use mm -hmm. data on team output to identify areas that are that where you know your team can improve and implement changes that drive better results? As I told you that uh, you know there are actually two aspects. One is the culture aspect, okay. One is the right. coaching aspect, and another one is the data aspect, okay. So right. in terms of evaluation, we must understand the funnels, okay. So in right. you know in cold calling, if I'll tell you, there are a lot of you know funnel stages. For example, if they are calling, so first, what is the total number of attempts, okay? So According to the total number right. of items, the second stage will be how how many are successful, how many will be unsuccessful. Okay. Then if they are getting successful calls, how many are relevant, right. how many are not relevant. Okay. So if they are getting, you know, if they are getting relevant lead, so if from relevant, how much they are able to actually, you know, um, convert. Okay. So like that, there are a lot of funnel stages. Mm -hmm. So what we check is. Uh, I have clearly defined the metrics for each of the funnel stages. For example, the manager or anyone who is actually evaluating or who is actually, you know, looking into the data, they will understand that, okay, if they are dialing 100 and if they are not achieving a certain number of successful calls, then what are the action items they must take? For example, if it is less, then we need to check with leads or with the cloud telephony why the connectivity is less and all. Okay, if there are, you know, if the successful call rate is okay and good right actually convert it so it is clearly right uh, 
Yeah, yeah, uh, there was some disturbance. Right, okay. right. I think it was an error issue. Right, right, right. So, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so th that was the end of uh, you know our questions. It was such an insightful you know session. Thank you so much for answering all our, mm -hmm. all of our questions. Thank you so much for taking mm -hmm. you know the time to join us for this session as well. Yeah, not an issue. Not an issue. Right, right. Thank you so much, Arka. Thank you so much for the session, and okay. thank you so much for your time.